Thank you. To you and your dear wife, I love you with all my heart. Tonight, I believe that your life will never be the same. I believe this. Hallelujah. We have tabernacled for days, feasting, learning, being pruned by the Spirit. And while you're standing very quickly, let me tell you five things that must happen every time you come to the house of God and every time God shows up in the midst of his people. Number one, every time you are in an atmosphere where the presence of God is, expect encounters. Amen. Hallelujah. An encounter is the name given to an experience, a supernatural experience that crystallizes the reality of God and the reality of the kingdom to you. An encounter. The goal of encounters is to create conviction. You cannot have conviction without encounters. I know whom I have believed, he says, and I am persuaded. It is not just that I believed him, but I know whom I have believed. Number two, expect transformation. Every time the presence of God comes, transformation is the name given to the process that makes you become like Christ in experience. Transformation. Number three, when we gather like this, expect an outpouring of miracles, signs, and wonders. These miracle signs and wonders reveal the love of God and they reveal the power of God. Miracle signs and wonders are letters from God through men to creation. I am still alive. Amen. Number four, expect impartations. Whenever you come to an atmosphere like this, an impartation is a transference of spiritual possibilities. That means you can take a grace you did not come with. This is true. And finally, expect fellowship, the mystery of human connections. Because you see, all blessings come from God through men to men. All, with no exception. All blessings come from God, but they come through men to men. So if God says yes, and on earth a man says no, the answer remains yes only in the realm of the spirit. If it must be yes in the spirit and yes in your life. God in partnership with men. God can connect you to destiny helpers strategically in conferences like this. So you have to be sensitive. Hallelujah. Are we ready for tonight? Please be seated for a few minutes. I'd like you to be very, very sensitive because I know that the power of God is strong in this place to heal, to deliver. But let me take a few minutes to just establish a few scriptures. I did tell us yesterday that without the proceeding word, the anointing has no ministry. The assignment of the anointing is to confirm the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For someone here, let me speak to you by the Spirit. I truly sense not everybody, but there are a few people here who are wrapping up an old season. 
and are about to enter new seasons in the spirit now of course what god says to one he says to all but there are specific people very specific people god has shown you in dreams the situations around your life have shown just help them this is a miracle service very specific people a season is coming to an end in your life and god is opening up new seasons sir are you a man of god what do you do what do you do i want to pray for you the call of god is upon your life come can i pray for you stand up what's your name I'm looking at the name that Elijah was called in the New Testament is your name. What is your name? Elias. I want to pray for you. Please help us with a mic in, in case. I stretch my hands, my friend. Listen to me. In the name that is above all names, may you step into a new season new season of power and a new season of grace madam i release you to a new season i'm seeing oil being poured on your head ah. a new season the lord is telling me that in this season he's also bringing you restoration super i don't know you from anywhere but i pray for you may that anointing come upon your life and shift you to a new level in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Tonight I like for your heart to be opened. I'm not going to be teaching for too long just to establish a few things. There are people whose situations have called on heaven. God needs to step in and turn people's lives around. Hallelujah. That lady sitting by the edge, stand up. The one, yes, you. What's your name? Harus Kedila Kushida Balakuzia. Let it be a new season for you by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Gabriel, I'm hearing a name, Gabriel, 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 we'll get to the word, Gabriel, who is Gabriel? I'm hearing a name, Gabriel. Just, just a moment or two, the man I'm talking about, what is your name, sir? Huh? I'm not hearing. Please come. Do you believe in miracles? Father, for the sake of your glory and your name, right now I stretch my hands. May your life and your entire family take that grace now. You step into a new season, never to be the same. In the name of Jesus Christ. Exodus, my spirit is fired up tonight. Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3. Please think that. Exodus chapter 3. We'll start from verse 1 just to establish one or two scriptures. The Bible talks about this man called Moses, that he kept the flock of his father-in-law little did he know that there was destiny upon him that he was going to be the vessel that God would use to literally take the nation of Israel from bondage to a land flowing with milk and honey even though he did not get to the land but were interested in the fact that a young 
frail gentleman who ran away because he killed an Egyptian. He did not know that the hand of God was upon his life and that one day he would be a savior and save about 2.5 million people thereabout and bring them from the grip of Pharaoh and even of Egypt. Verse 1 down to 15 tells us his encounter with the God of heaven. Particularly when we go to verse 9, chapter, chapter 9, Exodus chapter 9 from verse 1. We're coming back to verse 3, but please go to Exodus chapter 9. The Lord said unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh. By the time God was done with this man, the weak man who was running away was now sent back to the place of his fears. But not as the one who left. He says, Go into Pharaoh and tell him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go. They need to go and serve me. But you are constraining them. That Pharaoh of sickness. That Pharaoh of finances. He said, I want to visit them. But Moses, you go. Stand before Pharaoh. And tell Pharaoh. Thus saith the Lord. Let my people go. They need to go and serve me. Poverty has kept them down. They need to go and serve me. Delay and retrogression has kept them down. It was for this instruction, the entire journey of Exodus chapter 3, the revelation, the encounters, was to prepare him for the times when he will go and talk to Pharaoh. Did you know that most of the things you've gone through in your life are simply preparatory classes? Because you are about to step into seasons where God is going to begin to send you to the business world. Send you to ministry. Send you to politics and governance. Regardless the geography of your assignment, the instruction is the same. Whenever you find Pharaoh anywhere, speak to him and say i have come representing heaven let my people go now listen to me this is very important because this is the primary assignment of a witness the bible tells us that we have a corporate mandate regardless the geography of our assignment john chapter 1 and verse 6 this is the corporate mandate of the believers the bible says there was a man hallelujah everybody says sent the man did not just arrive he passed through the womb of a woman you call him a south african god said he came from god he only passed through the physical territory of South Africa. When you, when you try to identify that individual based on geography, you can say he's a South African, he's an African, but when you want to trace this man according to his divine location and his destiny, he's more than a South African. He's more than an African. The Bible said there was a man no name the man was sent from god when he arrived the earth they gave that man a name they called him you but he came from heaven please pay attention with one singular assignment Never forget this. This is the corporate mandate of every believer. Whether you are a politician, whether you are a businessman, your corporate mandate is in verse 7. Read with me, believers. One, two, read. Verse 7. One, the same. 
came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him his witness might believe this is it so while they call you whatever your name is that name is just a system of earthly identification the real name god calls you is witness he does not even call you a man of god he does not even call you a businessman i told you yesterday that our titles are simply a description of the geography of our assignment but he calls us witnesses who is a witness a witness is a validator of a claim the assignment of a witness is to make sure that the claims that are before the table are not negated by any other person in fact you do not need a witness until there is the contention to a claim is that true when you go to the court of law and you table a matter and someone is trying to oppose you the judge would invite you to bring a witness please listen very carefully the assignment of that witness is to prove the truthfulness of that statement and every witness is empowered with a token of truthfulness called evidence if you are truly a witness from god from heaven he does not let you go alone he grants you the capacity to prove that point he gives you an evidence are we together now the same came for a witness to the light that all men through him might believe so when the devil is ravaging creation and it looks like destinies are under siege what happens is that because of all those things satan uses men as a canvas to write a letter to god i doubt your might i doubt your power are you god indeed so god says where are the witnesses because i need to reply there needs to be a reply when god sends you as a witness and gives you the evidence when god uses you to lift people to break yokes and burdens he has used you to reply are we together now the healing the miracles are replies from god i am still god seated on the throne but every time there are no witnesses god will always look like a fraud star every time there are no witnesses god will always look like a scammer every time there are no witnesses god will always look like he is not god it is the absence of witnesses across a territory that makes darkness look so powerful the bible says in john chapter 1 and verse 5 and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not is it in your bible do you know the interesting thing about darkness even if a room has been dark for one year the moment you switch on the light the light does not respect the longevity of the darkness it becomes lightened immediately darkness of one year and darkness of two days and darkness of five years and darkness of 20 years they are all solved by the same instance light you would think that the longevity of the darkness would threaten the strength of the light when you switch on the light you will not know which of the room was dark first all of them come under the influence of that light So don't you tell me I've been in this condition for 30 years. Don't tell me I have been in this situation my entire family. Don't even say it just started last week. In light of the power of light, it doesn't really matter. If it is light indeed, by the privilege of God's grace, and I do not mean to sound arrogant, but by the privilege of the election of I have spent my life literally watching the manifest power of God over lives, 
over territories i know miracles are real i know that god can move and shift systems within a moment now please hear me as mighty as god is he will always use men to achieve his purposes you have to understand this the bible says and by a prophet the lord god brought israel out of egypt he was the one who brought them but the agency the vehicle was a prophet he says and by a prophet was he preserved we have come tonight to give god an opportunity to give us visitations visitations over our lives now listen in as much as we do not serve god because of miracles because of signs and wonders we love him more than that but can i tell you he's loving enough to be attentive to our needs when they camped with him three days he kept teaching 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 and the disciples said these people are hungry let them go he said no this is not consistent with my character i must take responsibility for their commitment feed them how do we feed these people you cannot tabernacle here leaving all the things that you have to do some of you have closed businesses some of you have made all kinds of sacrifices the God that we serve is a loving God. The God that we serve is a powerful God. And tonight he has chosen by his wisdom to reveal himself as that all-powerful God. Listen, listen to me. I, I wish I had time. I would have shared with you a few encounters, especially from scripture and then in my own life. I have seen the miracle power of God. I have been in situations in my life where I needed the manifestation of God's power and I have seen him come through. This God you see is dependable. This God you see is reliable. Look up. Can I tell you something? Because of our human nature, there is a way you can be so overwhelmed by the reality of your frustration, your financial situation, whatever it is that you may not believe. You may say amen, but somewhere in your heart you say, look, I, I've, been, I've, I've been here in such, I've been here long enough. In fact, I did not even write my condition in the prayer request because I'm not sure if God can attend to me. Brothers and sisters, if you being evil, the Bible says, that means as evil as men are, even terrorists take care of their families while they kill others. That means he's saying that as evil and wicked as people are, there is still a, a part of them that can communicate compassion. He said, how much more? Your heavenly father. So the proof of his fatherhood is his ease to release blessings to you. Please, I want you to believe this because we are going to get into a very serious session right now. I want you to be dissatisfied. Everything that does not name the name of Christ in your life, be ready to wave it goodbye. Be ready to wave it goodbye. And insist that it waves you back. Are we together? There are many of us here under the sound of my voice. What will take one month to do will now take you 10 years to do. There is a spirit behind that kind of thing. Just help those under the anointing. My spirit is fired up. I have seen people, let me tell you this. You know that delays at work in your life when the only thing growing in your life is your age. Some of us are connected to men and women who can be used by God to lift us. They will watch you like this and promise you heaven and hell and go around and bless others and you stand there as though you are not covered by favor. Please pay attention to what I'm telling you. 
Why do we need results in our lives? Don't you dare look down on the need for results. If your life does not produce results, your Christian experience will be frustrated. John chapter 15 and verse 8, here's what it says. Herein is our Father glorified. When ye bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. In Matthew chapter 5, Jesus teaching what we call the Beatitudes. When you read from verse 15 and 16, he says, Let your light so shine before men, not in heaven, not before angels, before men, that they might see your good deeds and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. John chapter 17 and verse 1, Jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven and prayed and this is what he said, Father, the hour has come. He says, glorify thy son that thy son may glorify you. If the sons in light are not glorified, God cannot be glorified. Let me tell you honestly, God is not glorified when believers are poor, broke, limited, frustrated, oppressed, those things do not spell a good image of this God that the Bible talks about. And so when he comes to you, he comes to lift. He comes to tear down everything that mocks his integrity over your life. Are you blessed tonight? What should we expect tonight? Expect to be healed. What should we expect tonight? Expect to be delivered all kinds of yokes and and devilish things that have tied destinies down i have been oppressed i know what it means to be oppressed hmm. did he not say the spirit of the lord is upon me for he hath anointed me to preach glad tidings to the poor. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, to open up prison doors. Have you seen any physical prison with a man inside? There are human beings moving physically, but they are in prison. Open up those closed doors. Most of you have become an object of shame and mockery to yourself and all who know you. They call you by all kinds of names and say you are there serving God, praying, fasting, rolling on the ground. There is nothing in your life that shows like God is alive. And can I tell you, that mockery has reached the heavens. God is now saying, I'm a warrior. Clear the road for me. I want to have a holy convocation in the midst of my people. He says, the Lord in the midst of thee is mighty. So I'm saying this because in the next two, three minutes we are going to pray and shake off unbelief. Shake off unbelief and say I believe, I know, I know that God can change my life. I know that while I'm seated here, God can begin to move over someone and that person will not have rest tonight until he calls me and says where have you been i have been looking for you then you know that this one is not the doing of men please believe what i'm telling you i'm not i'm not just this is not some i fear god i will not come here and waste your time you see let me tell you this it is seen to attempt to communicate a spiritual reality that is higher than the dimension of grace you have the bible says to minister according to the measure of grace difficult things that are supposed to be easy but there are people who sit you start a, a building project for years you are still at it years you are still at it as if it's a course i hope you're not offended i'm challenging you because god is determined to visit you this night now please listen carefully please listen carefully can i be very honest with you under god primarily over 80% of the challenges of men, listen carefully, 80% or more of the challenges of men, there are spirits and forces behind it. Find a way of believing that this is true. He says the enemy has done this. Jesus clearly told us 
that the enemy has done this. And so he has sent us and anointed us tonight and granted us the privilege of grace. I thought I'll be able to share a few things but there's no time for that. I really want to maximize the time to do that which we have to do so that we'll finish on time and then you make for your coffee. But let me share with you one experience. I have spent my life in encounters. It is an election of grace, the privilege of God's grace. And I, I don't know if I shared it last when I was here, but please pay attention. When the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me, I was flat on the ground and he, I don't know if he, his feet was on the ground or he was in the air. I can't even tell you. Light at his brilliance, splendor. I could look at any part of him forever. There I was like a dead man looking at this great God that preachers talk about all the time. And I said, my God, what will preachers do when they see him? When I saw him, he didn't open his mouth to say anything to me. And yet he was speaking to me. This is a strange thing about spiritual encounters. And he stretched forth his hand and light from him entered into my being. Light that ordinarily is like throwing a TV set inside a, vo a volcano. It should disintegrate it in a moment. How I did not die, it will never tire me to say this. It's a miracle that I will ask him to help me explain when we get to heaven. But from that encounter and that light, my life changed. I began to experience phenomenal levels of revelation, phenomenal levels of his power. And in one other encounter, listen very carefully. I saw people who were sick, people who were oppressed, all kinds of people. And it was as though, you know how a lockdown is, like a curfew. And I saw the people just lined up on the street. And I was broken. I said, I mean, who did this to these people? And then I heard a voice speak to me from heaven. That I should go and heal them all. And when I heard that voice, I said, this is it. I knew that that was true. I was worshiping the Lord and then the Lord comes to me to give me an encounter and he says my son from this day I give you my presence as a gift please listen carefully can you help me with a little volume and then my eyes are open and I see this being standing by me and I said who is this and he said, he will walk with you as you go to the nations. I said, what is his name? And he said, he's called the angel of the Lord's presence. I told you that I will explain to you what is responsible for some of these manifestations that you see. I cannot take credit for it. And every time I step into a place, he comes with that spiritual climate. To deliver, to heal, to save, to change, to lift burdens. That is the reason why you can hear that in a moment. Oh Jesus, the twinkling of an eye, an age-long captivity, just like that. Just like that. Just like that. It is the power of the Holy Spirit. I know. Now listen, please listen. I'm about to begin to minister to people. Just pay attention. I didn't used to walk very strongly in the prophetic. I had miracles and all of that. But one night, I was watching William Branham. An old video of his. And I said, look at this dear man. People persecuted him, misunderstood him because maybe towards the end of his life, things just changed like that. 
And while I was looking at him, I said, but this man feared God. He may have made mistakes, but this is a sincere man. All of a sudden, it was like something, a cold sensation from that laptop to my head. It started going down right my whole body within a period of 30 minutes and after that by the next meeting I went to the heavens had opened what, what, is, what is happening to me I wasn't born with this now please hear me the Lord gave me an instruction and he said every nation and every territory Please help me. Someone sit on the drums for me. Just the symbol. Yeah? Anybody who understands what to do. He says every nation that I will send you to. That light that came from me to you. There must be someone in that meeting. That that same light. Will rest upon them. And I tell you by the God of heaven. I have remained faithful to that call. From nation to nation. And tonight by the privilege of the election of grace I have come as one sent you have received me and the God of heaven is about to move in this place and bring glory to the name of Jesus age long captivities just like that doors of destinies that have been closed Parus Kadeka Kanias Kadila Kaparusiata Doors just like that. Atmosphere shift now. Chains be broken. Break now. Holy Spirit move now heaven oh I want to pray for you now please pay attention your life is about to change now here's what will happen I'm going to minister to people just walk with the ushers and let's just walk so we redeem time what is your name, sir? What do you do? I'm seeing you. Please, someone help us with an extra mic. Is that possible? Please. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing you in a vision sitting on a table. And I'm seeing you with money. I'm seeing you with files. And I'm seeing you talking to people. What do you do? I'm a financial advisor. You are a? Financial advisor. You are a financial advisor. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, he's shifting you to a new season. It will not be like before. He's connecting you to kings and nobles. Take that grace now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you ready now? I want to pray for you. Wherefore God had so highly exalted him. And giving him a name that is above every other name. He said that at the name of Jesus. Haris Kedebakata. Every knee should bow. Of things in heaven. Of things in the earth. And of things under the earth. I want to pray for you. Now please listen. At the count of three I want you to shout that name Jesus. There are yokes that have sat upon the destinies of people. And as you shout that name, the power of God comes upon you. Please, I'd like you to bring those people under the anointing gently and just bring them out here without disrupting the men of God. Are we together? We have to be very fast. At the count of three, I want you to shout that name, Jesus. Everywhere, inside, outside. Father, I have come as you have sent me over the land of South Africa that every spirit that does not name the name of Christ in the name of Jesus I come tonight by the rod of a higher priesthood and I decree and declare as you shout let every wall of Jericho let every spirit manipulating your destiny leave you now please whether you are an usher or not 
once they begin to shout and people are under the anointing they shout the name Jesus help them if someone is falling under the anointing close to you please help them so they don't injure themselves are you ready now father let the band of wickedness be loose once and for all at the count of three shout that name that is above every other name one two three shout Jesus be free now be free now be free now be free now every yoke every bondage kaparakatos katebekata embrakatos katikata I command every power that is not of God sitting on your destiny I rebuke you in the name of Jesus the son of the living God now listen carefully I'm still praying there are families that never rise beyond a certain level no matter the level of educational qualification tonight I've come Mani Ketas Kalikata every family that has been under that yoke out of three may fire fall yes. from heaven over this place are you ready? one, two three, take that fire take that fire every family be free now be free now release their destinies release their destinies release their destinies even the lawful captives shall be delivered even the lawful captives shall be delivered Hallelujah. I'm seeing chains on people's hands. This is what I'm seeing. And this has, this has limited your productivity. You do things and nothing works. Ministry, business, right now I pray upon any hand where there is a chain limiting you from rising. I'm seeing fire coming on hands. Fire, fire coming on hands. I burn that chain. I burn that chain in the name of Jesus Christ. Rada balagade kete bregado e parada ya chain randa yada bi protek to chain e pekete bregada chain randa kete kete re pano ke se breketo e pagarada ya yes chains be broken be broken be broken de kapa para de kapa hallelujah the Lord is ministering to me and is showing me a woman six years you are yet to give birth six years please who is that person I want to pray for you your time has come six years we are still praying get dissatisfied tonight enough is enough in the name of Jesus, enough is enough. You find that person very quickly. Let me talk to that person because we have to shift. Now, the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing a family. There is a pattern of death. Almost every year, someone must die. Seriously, people just continue to die. I stretch my hands. I don't know who belongs to such a family. Right now, I decree and declare 
any family that has the spirit of death Romi abakatos kete bakata kebren teke bakatos katiata in the name of Jesus be delivered now be delivered now be delivered now oh death where is your sting and oh grave where is your victory How many years have you been married? I will pray for you, but the one, I'm looking for the one who is six years. Six years without a child. Who is that? Please, very quickly. I will pray for you. Mm. Six years, my dear. You believe in Jesus Christ? Place your hand on your womb. I don't care what the medical situation is. Believe in Jesus. Listen. When you see us talk like this, we are not stupid people. There is a name that is higher and greater of the three of you, the power of God is coming on one of you right now. And when that happens, then I pray for the rest. This is the instruction I'm receiving. I just saw fire, light coming on one of you. These ones who are standing here. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. The same, same time, with same six years. The power of God is coming on one of you. One of you that are standing here. In the name of Jesus, may that anointing rest upon you and turn your life around supernaturally. When that power comes on one of you, one of you right now, as I'm speaking, Kariz Ganekatush Kalibrandagata. My dear, shout Jesus. Be free now. Look at me, my dear. In the name of Jesus, I command your womb to open now. According to the time of life, I speak to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look at me. Your time of shame and the mockery over your life. This is what the Holy Spirit is telling me. That he's rolling away that reproach. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Are you the one trusting God for the fruit of the womb? Place your hand there. You believe in Jesus? Don't cry. This is what happens when Jesus comes. A revelation of his love. I lay my hands upon you and in the name of Jesus I command that devil let her go now in the name of Jesus Christ let that womb be open a fata open heater and tether in the name of Jesus Christ now hear me for all of you who are standing here release her destiny now now let her go in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God I release your family. I release everything. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now let me pray for you. I just saw light coming upon you. And the Lord is saying it's your season of fruitfulness. This woman. Let it be over right now. In the name of Jesus. You know. I have lived in this reality for many years. But I never get used to it. I still marvel myself at the power of God. Jesus, for your glory, let it come to an end. Amen. In the name of Jesus, I speak to you and I release the power of the Holy Spirit. Let it be over now. You will go and you will return with miracles according to the time of life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. I'm hearing a name Mary. I'm hearing a name Mary. Now, of course, I presume that there might be a, a number of people with such a name. But I'm hearing a name Mary. 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 I just want to speak to you very quickly. And then... Your name is Mary? You're a member of this church? We're going to pray. Sir, 
Look at me. Please tap that man. I don't know you, but as soon as you came out here, the Lord just opened my eyes and I saw you climbing a ladder. Can I pray for you? I'm not, I'm not manipulating you to come out here at all. It's just a word. Look at me, sir. I stretch my hands by the spirit of grace and prophecy. Step into a new season. In the name of Jesus. I don't know what it is that you do, but I release grace upon you. An end comes to this current level. For someone, what you are watching happen here, that is the grace you would take back to your church. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, supernatural signs, genuine, genuine manifestations of the power and the grace and the glory of God. Can I be honest with you? Not everyone is pretending and faking this thing. That's right. There are That's people right. who have encountered the God of the Bible since. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. lady that shouts loud right now under the anointing to the hearing of everyone please don't come out at random we have to Mary I want to pray for you you get the glory you get the praise you take the honor I just want to say thank you You get the glory You get the praise You take the honor I just want to say thank you So in my life In my life Be glorified Be glorified Yeah, look at me. I stretch my hands. I'm seeing God take something out of your body. And the Lord is saying he's bringing you life right now. I cause the spirit that is back of this be free now. In the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God. In the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know what has made you to cry. But I'm declaring to you right now. The Lord is asking me to stretch my hands. These are extensions of the hands of Jesus. That everything. Remember not the former things madam. Nor consider the things of old. For behold. God is doing a new thing in your life. He's doing a new thing in your life. By the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. January. This year you lost your job who is that person i'm seeing this in a vision january this year just like that for reasons you cannot explain the lord is asking me to pray for you we have to hurry up january please make sure you are not please don't tell lies we're in the presence of god i will pray for everybody make sure that we're walking in truth madam i don't know who you are please just let me talk with this lady yes come can i pray for you I'm, I'm looking at you and in the realm of the spirit I'm seeing you know how like a ceremony happening that maybe you are you are crowning someone that's what I'm seeing happening to you and the Lord is telling me that he's lifting you and opening doors that you have not even seen before I want you to believe this this is the word of the Lord I stretch my hands over you and in the name of Jesus may that grace come upon you that will shift you to a new realm in the name of Jesus and by the power that raised Jesus from the dead let there be a miracle for you right now in the name of Jesus Christ where are you coming from? Jesus Christ let there be a miracle for you right now huh. my God.
God is able to do just what He says He will do. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, cause He will keep on. Jesus' name, I pray for you. By the power of the Holy Spirit, madam, I do not know you, but I ask the Lord by His Spirit to open up a new chapter for your life. You believe that? In the name of Jesus, I declare by the Spirit of God that grace comes upon you right now. My dear, this lady, I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus. I'm seeing your shoes being changed in the realm of the Spirit, like another kind of shoe is given to you. This is what I'm seeing. And the Lord is saying you will begin to run. He's bringing his, his very strange grace for multiplication over your life. Receive that grace right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I can't even remember why they are here. Mary, I want to pray for you. The last time I was here, there was the name of a place that God gave me. I couldn't pronounce it. Yes, please help me pronounce that. Umalanga. There is a businessman, you are from that place. Right now as I'm speaking, the Lord wants to change your life. Who is that person? You are wearing black like a jacket or something. I'm seeing it. Is there someone like that? Just take it easy, my friend. Where are you coming from? Is... Stand up. What do you do? But things are not working. You believe that I can pray for you and God will change your life? I stretch my hands. Let captivity come to an Take that grace now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I open up that door by the Spirit. Let it be a new season for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where, where are you coming from? Is he coming from that place? What do you do, sir? There's someone that I'm seeing. You're into IT. This is what I'm seeing. You're into IT. The Lord wants to use you to change your entire family because there is a yoke that has sat upon that family. I don't know who that sin is, but I want to pray for you right now. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, he's able. New season, new season, new season. By the power of the Holy Spirit, a new season for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are a businessman, I pray for you. By the power of the Holy Spirit, a new season. I release you now. Parasku dabarende kashkole bariakata. Let it be a new season. Let the door be open for you. In the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the living God. I pray for all of you who are involved in IT. The power of God is coming on one of you. I don't know who, but I just saw that light. The Lord is opening that door right now. I shift you. He already told you wealth is spiritual. I shift you by the power of the Holy Ghost. Step into a new level. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, where is that gentleman who was doing the welcome note? Him and one lady. One gentleman here. God wants to... Where is... Is that him? Yes, sir. What do you do, my friend? Huh? He's an IT because, specialist. Because, yes, I'm seeing that he's part of the people that I'm talking about. I don't know anything about you, my friend. I'm just walking with the vision that the Lord... Are you into IT? Take that grace now. In the name of Jesus.